So, uh, so in this card, we're, we're going to basically have a look at the workflow inside of ZBrush. And what I want to show you is that this mesh was created inside of ZBrush. It was, uh, it was, it was retopologized from a ZSphere mesh. So you can see that we can clearly create very clean, animatable, animatable meshes uh, inside of ZBrush. So ZBrush really takes care of things through levels of detail, and in fact this is level 1, and if we look over here, this is my high frequency detail, which is essentially my level 6, or the highest subdivision that I have in this character. And the highest subdivision basically takes care of all of the, the very uh, finicky details, and, and uh, even, uh, even pores and veins and all that sort of stuff. So really, it's, uh, it's tertiary forms, but, um, but obviously this is uh, uh, the polishing, which is... Uh, which is really what it allows you, what allows you the the freedom of sculpture, the sense that you sculpt it inside of ZBrush. Uh, that's this is kind of the old way that we used to do it, and we would uh, subdivide this, and then of course we could never get this sort of stuff. So really powerful. And the next cool thing is that of course we can now poly paint, which allows me not only to sculpt, but it allows me to airbrush inside of ZBrush. So. Really uh, fantastic workflow, and I'm going to be taking you through all of those. So, uh, so lo let me just load this head canvas here. And this head canvas you can find on ZBrush Central. A guy by the name of Sheb created it. That's S-H-E-B. And uh, when you download it, it's not going to quite look like this. It was created for ZBrush 2, so it was a single object. Uh, what I've done is I've basically gone ahead and just separated it into subtools. And also uh, created these, uh, these different groups that allow me to select on an area and isolate it as I'm sculpting. So let's actually get into uh, my workflow. The first thing that I want to discuss is the morph target. Now the morph target is really there to, as a safety net, if you will. It's a way to save you from any kind of mistakes. Again, remember, everything's about forward movement, forward progression. And I don't really want to think about going back. I don't want to do uh, control uh, Z on this. And, and really, of course, at the beginning, it's not that big a deal. But as you start getting it further along and you're into 18 million polygons and 20 subtools, uh, the computer's going to have to do a lot of calculating. This is not a ZBrush problem. This is naturally what it has to do. I mean, if you're undoing uh, something, it has to go through all of those layers. It has to go through all of those subtools, and it has to rebuild that stuff. So, uh, so really, a forward progression saves you a lot of time. There's a lot less waiting, and it keeps you moving in terms of the art. So. Store a morph target, get in the habit of doing that right away, delete and store a morph target. I do that anytime I'm basically in a new layer. So, and then uh, let's go ahead and do divide. So I'm just going to divide this a few times. I'm going to say four, which is more than enough at this point. But you can see that obviously my, you know, because I'm now on, le on level four, that or that uh, or subdivision four, that basically my morph target is no longer there. My morph target exists on level one. Or subdivision one. So let's just go ahead and do a delete and then store now. So now I've got this new morph target that is associated with this subdivision. The other thing is I want to go ahead and create a layer in here. But let me show you, let me just turn off this layer and I want to show you something. Let's say that you were working on something and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the snake hook and I'm going to turn X on. Let's say that I've been working on something for a while, and all of a sudden, I, I accidentally do something like that to the model. Now again, if you have, uh, right now, it's not that big a deal. I don't, I don't have a lot of stuff going on in the model, and the, the polygons are pretty low. But if I have 18 million polygons, and I have 20 subtools, if I do a control Z at this point, I'm going to be waiting. And that isn't necessarily conducive to the workflow that I'm trying to explain. So since I have a morph target, and I and by really I have nothing on the layers that's that's to be affected. I can do a switch, and basically that gets me gets rid of the error that I made and still puts me back to where I started. Now I want you to take note of something. I just did a switch. So really, what's the morph target that's now saved? I've swift I've switched the two states. Well, if I switch again, you can see that clearly the one that I stored. The one that I switched is now the saved morph target state. This is not what I want. So if you do a switch, remember to delete 
and then store again so that you basically store the base mesh that you wanted into, into the, the morph target. Now, let's have a look at layers. In layers, I can always, for instance, if I basically just rename this layer, I can call it work. I can have a bunch of layers here. As long as I create a new layer and call it work, I have the same kind of ability. So let's say that I've gone ahead and I've done the same sort of thing, and clearly that's not what I wanted. Well, as long as I have this layer here, my work layer, I can turn that off and bang, I've gotten rid of it. And again, no control on Z's. So really, forward progression, and I'm really, all I'm doing is, is getting rid of the very top layer in terms of the memory data. So this is, uh, this is an important uh, way for you to be able to go forward and move with your work. So let's just delete that and create a new layer. And I'm going to uh, show you a workflow uh, that really deals with what I call the knife inside of ZBrush. When I discovered ZBrush for the first time, it was sold to me by my friends as, man, you can sculpt inside of a computer. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Can I really? You know, are you no more vert pulling? No more? No, no, no. You can like sculpt. You can sit there and sculpt. And I thought, man, that's that's really cool. But then I, I started thinking about it, and it's like, well, does it really sculpt, or does it kind of sculpt? So it was important to me when I started that I really wanted to be able to emulate my real world workflow. I wanted to, if it was if it was going to basically be sold as a sculpting package, then I wanted to be able to sculpt. I didn't want to kind of be able to sculpt, I wanted to sculpt. So when I first approached ZBrush, it was basically about discovering ways to work within ZBrush that allowed me to emulate my everyday workflow. And one of the very first things anybody who's ever sculpted in the real world is that you, you build up uh, your foundation pretty quickly by slapping on clay. And then once you have that form there, once you have all that clay, you're going to take a knife to it or you're going to take a big rake to it and you're just going to start carving in. So I really needed to find a way that allowed me to do that, that allowed me to go in there and really kind of treat it as if I was like, you know, uh, cutting chunks of it off. And, um, and the way I was able to do that is with the masks. So masks are really powerful. And as long as you take the approach of thinking about where, where are the areas you want to remove. So in this case, I'm just kind of thinking about recessed areas that I want to remove, then I can go in and quickly paint those areas. And and what I'm going to actually use is I'm going to use a, a little bit of a trick because I'm going to invert this mask in a second. Oh, oh there you go. Here's, um, this usually happens a little bit later on, I do it on purpose, in this case I did it by accident, but often you'll find uh, one of the functionalities inside of ZBrush is uh, to be able to control click on your surface and, and it blurs your mask. Well, if you go over here and you have a look at your masking sub palette, you'll see that you actually have blur mask and sharpen mask. If this happens to you, it's no big deal, just click sharpen mask and you're right back to where you started. So. Uh, it's, a, it's a neat little feature that's in there that uh, definitely uh, helps with the workflow issue. So just moving forward and thinking about where I want what areas I want to kind of carve away and we'll do the same here on the back. And if I think about where the Adam's apple is. There's a direct correlation back with the seventh vertebrae on the back. So I can go ahead and just give an indication of where the Adam's apple, and if I draw a straight line on the back, then I know that right here is gonna be that little protrusion of, um, of the seventh vertebrae. So it's a, it's a nice kind of way for you to be able to line up where, where your anatomy is. So once that's done, all I need to do is hit control and then click on the surface, so that basically inverts that mask. So now, clearly, everything else is not going to move, and and what isn't, I have, I have, uh, I now have the ability to go in and affect. So I'm going to change my brush to the move brush, 
and I'm going to change my diameter, and I'm literally going to go in, and I'm going to pull these areas in. So in, ens in essence, this is as close as I can get to removing clay inside of ZBrush from the canvas. Once I'm kind of happy with, with the result, one of the things that I can do is I can click, remember I can control click on the surface and that will blur that mask, or I could, or could have done it over here. And then now I can kind of go in and just smooth some of this out, just so that I, I get a, a better transition. Now my goal here is not to create the final sculpture using this. Remember, all I'm doing is creating the base mesh to get me started towards the final sculpture. So if we have a look at the layer here and we basically flip between the two, you can see that quite quickly we went in and we removed quite a lot of material and we're able to quickly start defining where the skull is and, and even some of the muscles of the neck. So really a powerful way to be able to go in and start sculpting.